right, so coming into the cerebellum, you have a couple of tracks. You have the um, climbing, which is the oligocerebellar, and the mossy fibers are both coming in the cerebellum. Um, the mossy fibers are going to come up and become the granule cells, which are going to split into the parallel fibers at the, um, what level is this called? Molecular. Molecular level. And then it's going to come over here, and then the climbing is also going to come over, and together they're both going to affect this it's called the Purkinje um, cells, which are going to feed back to the deep cerebellar nucleus. Um, the Purkinje cells are an inhibitory, so what happens is these two excite, and then this will then inhibit messages from going out of the cerebellum. So from the cerebellum coming out, these are the efferent tracts leaving. Um, inhibition versus excitatory. These are both excitatory, the oligocerebellar being more powerful, and the granular parallel to the Purkinje are a little weaker. Um, and then again, Purkinje will inhibit dentate from acting. The important fibers and pathways that are important with this whole thing going on here are the, uh, <laughs> we have five mossy fibers. We have Pontocerebellar, reticulocerebellar, raphe cerebellar, hypothalamocerebellar, and then cerulocerebellar. Um, we already talked about oligocerebellar, which was associated with the climbing fibers, and then we have four spinal cerebellar um, fibers, which are anterior and posterior spinal cerebellar, um, cuneo cerebellar, um, and rostral spinal cerebellar. Um, and those are all the cere cerebellar afferents. Alright, so within the cerebellar pathways, there are two different types of neurotransmitters. There is a glutamate and a GABA. Glutamate is associated with the climbing fibers and mossy fibers, and it is excitatory. And then we have the GABA neurotransmitters, which is, which is associated with the Purkinje cells, and it is inhibitory. Thank you.